you are now tuning to That Scary with your host, Melanie P, a podcast about everything from relationships to finances, sex, and what's going on in the culture. Every week, a different guest host, a different topic, raw, unfiltered. So sit back and relax. Melanie P, talk to him. That's scary with Melanie P. Ooh, you again. Listen, welcome to another episode of the That's Scary with Melanie P podcast. We are here today with a special, 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 special guest. Morathi? Am I, am I, am, hold up, I don't want to mess it up. Tell me I'm pronouncing that right. Morathi. Morathi. Why am I pronouncing that wrong? Morathi. Oh my God. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. How are you me. feeling? I'm, I'm excellent. I'm excellent. Excellent. Good. That's good. You know, every every show we start the episode with a mental health check in. How are you feeling? How's your week been? How are you feeling? How's your mental health this week? Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yes, it is. It awesome. Is. Awesome. Yeah. I think I'm feeling I'm feeling really good actually. The sun, the weather has been good. Like I'm a big weather person. Um me too. weather's been good. I've been on PTO. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> a couple of days so that has me really feeling good i feel like you know my you know your body talks to you you know what i'm saying Absolutely. and i feel like my body was saying you need a day off <laughs> you need a day off and as soon as i had a day off and i had a little bit more rest i felt so rejuvenated <laughs> so I, I am feeling really 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 good but i want to just do a little introduction of my guests um for those of y'all who don't know and I don't want to mess it up again. Marathi. Don't, don't tell me. Marathi. You got it. Is that right? <laughs> you got okay, it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. He is the CEO and founder of Vegan Love Culture. He's the leading figure in promoting health and wellness in Cabarrus County. He actively engages the community through quarterly sessions for both elders and youth, educating and empowering and equipping individuals on better food choices. He is an, about the importance of accessible, nutritious food and addresses um, food disparities in the um, in the community. He is known as Mr. Vegan Love Culture. <laughs> now, where did that name come from? <laughs> um, uh, it was just uh, a name that was given based off of my business, yeah. Vegan Love Culture. Okay. So they okay. said Mr. Vegan Love Culture. Nice. Um, I got to be unorthodox here because we was having an amazing conversation before we hit the record button. And yes. I, I'm about to go off script because this is what you were telling me before we even started is something that we need to start the podcast with. But before that. We're going to play a game. <laughs> right. We're going to play a game just to get you comfortable, just to know a okay. little bit about who you are. So I'm going to ask you a bunch of random questions. Okay. Random questions. And just tell me your answer, okay? Okay. All right. So when you hear the word peace, what comes to mind? Um, when I think of the word peace, um, I definitely look at it from an internal place. But I think of peace is something that you have to acquire based off of it's a holistic thing. Mm. So um, for me, peace starts with what you put on your plate. Mm. And once you understand the energy of food, you will put the food on your plate that brings peace to your body. Ooh. So if you're putting um, McDonald's, McDonald's <laughs> you're putting uh, a bunch of dead animals yeah. that have the energy that is transferred to your body, whether it's anger, depression, mm. anxiety, everything those animals are feeling before they get killed. You can't expect to always have peace. You're going to have more depression, more anxiety, because that energy is going to transfer to you. Wow. Um, but when you're eating from the earth in which you come from, the DNA makeup, uh, as you can look outside, it's yeah. peaceful. Those plants are peaceful. Mm-hmm. So when you put that into your body, that's transferred to you. Wow. And so you have been um, on this vegan lifestyle for, what, 26 years plus? Uh, twenty. Well, it'll be 25 years coming up. Wow. Well, 26 coming up, yeah. How, and I, again, I'm going off because, I listen, I got so many... <laughs> It's about to be so good. I just, I'm all over the place. But how did you even start? Like, how did you start? Um, I uh, went to North Carolina Central University. Okay, okay. And I always like to say that um, I was given a blue pill in the Matrix <laughs> early in my freshman yeah. year of college. So um, um, I was on my way, we was on our way to the cab for Chicken Wednesdays. Okay. Oh, all Lord. HBCUs yeah. didn't know about that. <laughs> so my good friend, um, Ahmad Yarbrough, we was on our way walking up to the cab and he was like, you know, I don't eat meat, right? And just like people ask me the question today, um, I asked him, well, what is it that you eat? Yeah. And then he said, saying, I eat from the earth, uh, talked about Genesis 129 and gave the reasons of why he didn't based off of all of the diseases that have come in our communities from diabetes yeah. to 
high blood pressure strokes and things like that. So we we got to the calf and uh sure as no we went through the through the line. He got all veggies and everything and I got my chicken. We said your fried chicken. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh as we were talking, he was breaking things down and I always say truth is verifiable. And when you hear truth, it's gonna resonate with right. you, whether you want to take it at that at that time or not. So as he was breaking it down, I was eating my chicken. He was doing this thing. And then whenever I left to go back to the to the dorm, I call it the Alice in Wonderland hole. I started doing research, seeing where these things were happening to us, these things were happening to us. And then it took me on my journey. And I always like to say, whatever it is that's in your, that you put out to the universe of what you want is going to come to you. So whether it's bad, if you're looking for bad, it's going to come back to you. If you're looking for good, it's going to come back to you. So then... I was searching. So those people, I was searching for people to help me. Mm-hmm. I started meeting other people. Wow. And so I was woken up out of the boop, uh, out of the matrix at a very young age to give up, uh, give up animals. And wow, that's amazing. Mm. I did a poll on Instagram and I said, you know, how many people have thought about, you know, becoming a vegan, um, and everybody, and like everybody was like me, 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 me. But you okay. know, I, but I feel like everybody kind of wants to live a better lifestyle and mm-hmm. and live, you know, change their diet. But it's hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but they don't know how. But we'll get to that. Okay. okay. Next game. I mean, next question. What is your example of a fun date night? Um, my exa- <laughs> my example of a fun date night uh would is very simple. Yeah. Um, because I like to I like to interact mm-hmm. more than uh like I I don't want to go to a place where there's a lot of distractions yeah. because I'm into getting to know the person. Yeah. So we can go on, uh, we can go on a walk, yeah. uh, go interactive. Uh, yeah. Interactive. Go to the lake. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't mind a movie. Yeah. A movie is fine. Yeah. Um, uh, but things that cause us to be able to hear each other and focus in on each other, not a lot of distractions, yeah. uh, go, but yeah, but also going to festivals yeah. and things like that. That's, yeah. that's very fun for me. Nice. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if you have, and I feel like this might be a bad question to ask you, but a lazy day. Do you even have lazy days? Uh, I, you know, it's funny. I'm glad, I'm glad <laughs> you brought it, you brought it up because I just also had, um, two days of rest. Okay. Because when Dr. Lamar Price came mm-hmm. to do the, do our eye yeah. exams, he's an eye neurologist, so he can look in your eyes. Yeah. After he it showed me, he said, Marathi, you're in optimal health. But, bro, you need to slow down and get you some rest. Wow. You need to go. It, there should be a day that you only get up to go use the restroom and go and lay back down and go to sleep. Wow. Right? So I just did that for about one and a half days. Okay. And so, but I was forced to do it because my radiator blew in my car. Oh, wow. Right? So I had to get it fixed. But as soon as it blew, I knew what it was for. Yeah. The creator was saying, okay, you don't want to slow yourself down, Marathi, so I'm going to slow you down. Mm. And I needed it. So I went back to the house, rested. The car was fixed the next day, and I was back on the road. But I needed that, and I feel rejuvenated because of it. Wow. Our bodies are, we don't give our bodies enough credit. We do not give our bodies enough credit. Exactly. (laughs) What's your favorite um, go-to meal or dish? Um, My favorite go-to meal or dish would be Indian food. Any type of Indian food um, or Ethiopian food. Okay. I like those because when I came into the lifestyle, I came in strictly on plants. It okay. wasn't a lot of mock meats and things yeah. like that. So Ethiopian food and Indian food were the two first ones that brought me into it and also Jamaican food. So okay. my go-to would always be, if if I was going out, that's yeah. what it would be. If I'm at the house, mm-hmm. it's always a, a, a nice smoothie, okay. um, avocados, you know, mix up an avocado thing with some uh, flaxseed chips and mm, eat that and stuff like that. That does not sound like <laughs> 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 um, It's so funny. So I, I went meatless for a year, mm-hmm. and then it got hot outside, and I really wanted a hot dog um, yeah, from the yeah. grill. From the okay. grill, because I love me some food from the grill. And uh-huh. um, I was eating these... Um, I guess you can call them fake hot dogs, like okay. or like plant based hot dogs, hot mock meat, mock, mock mock meat, meat. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't good, and <laughs> and um, I I reverted back, man. I was so mad at myself. But what are your thoughts on like the mock meat mm-hmm. and like the I guess is, is it is it called fake meat? Like like what are your thoughts um, on that? They call it mock meats. Okay. Um, I think it's a uh, it's it's great transitional okay. food. Um, it's nothing that you should constantly eat mm-hmm. all the time and expect to get um good health out of it because you know i mean but it is always better than a red meat hamburger Mm. it's always better than a processed hot dog that the pig they cut all different parts of the pig and just make it into a hot dog it's Mm. better than that but it's something and it's going to come out easier okay however us as a us as a people we have to start eating more fruits and vegetables like our aunts and our grandmothers and our our great grands did they were 
they were plant based before we even thought about it. Yeah. They were always they rarely ever had meat, mm. and so they usually grew grew the food. Yeah, grandma preserved it. We were sitting at her feet plucking peas, chucking corn. And we ate that way. So um, the process. Kids, not do that. This, kids don't do that no more. No, nah, they don't do that <laughs> Or they, no they don't even see that no more. They don't do that no more. Mm-hmm. But the processed meats are good. So say, say for an example that you want to do meatloaf and whatever. Mm-hmm. Go get Beyond Meat. Yeah. Make make the meatloaf and then get your fruits and, I mean, your veggies or whatever and have that. I, now, so I say that for people that are wanting to still have the taste of meat every so often because I do as yeah. well, it is a good way to transition do that, but mm-hmm. at the ultimately, you want to put more raw fruits and vegetables in your system on a daily basis. Wow. Mm. Okay, um, what's the first thing you notice about people when you meet somebody new? Um, the very first thing I notice about them, it would be their energy. I'm gonna feel the energy first. Um, uh, but I, me myself personally, uh, because I vibrate at such a high energy, if the energy is negative, um, I don't feed into it. I overcome it with my with my spirit. Um, and eye contact, um, and yeah, that would be it. Energy and eye contact. Yeah. I'm so like, I know, I think every podcast I try, I try to stop myself from seeing it, but I think I see it every single podcast, how I'm so big on energy, like yeah. energy vampires. Like I think I've had like one, I've encountered one person on my podcast that was, it wasn't anything bad, uh-huh. but the energy was just off yeah. and it threw it. I'm like, wow, it threw me off. So, mm-hmm. so much. No one could tell, like, you know, no, no okay. the guests couldn't tell nobody out here could tell, but, um, I'm like, wow, this felt so uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> like, I've only experienced that one time, and, but it just shows like how, how big energy is and feeling somebody's energy and how it could just throw you off. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I want, do you think everybody feels people's energy? Yeah, but I think that uh, some people's signals, uh, their senses are more stronger than others mm-hmm. uh, based off of their focus and what they do in their life, you yeah. know? So, uh, but I, but that energy comes more to women mm, and that. babies and even dogs more than not saying that men don't get it we mm, get it yeah but the intuitive energy that black women especially mm-hmm. have because of your wombs is the most impo- most powerful thing on on the earth so what do you mean our wombs um your wombs uh because this is where you birth mm-hmm. you know you birth this is that's your energy portal mm. and so therefore that energy portal because it's a it's a creation portal it gives you a high level of intuition. Mm. And most of the time, a lot of our women, especially in our communities, they, like some of their great-grandmothers or their grandmothers, they have dreams that come true. They actually hear spirits. They can see spirits, but they've been afraid to even tap into it because they've been told it's the devil. Mm. Um, But it's actually a gift um, from Harriet Tubman to be able to see the Underground Railroad from I lived in Africa for 11 years. So oh, wow. remember Shaka Zulu, right? Yes. Okay. Who did Shaka Zulu go to see whenever he needed wisdom? He went to the quote unquote witch doctor. Mm-hmm. Scared the mess out of me. I could never right. look at her. But they say it's a witch doctor, but those are the seers, the ones that could see what was happening mm-hmm. before it happened. And a lot of our women, that that has been passed down through ancestry but they run from it because of con- um, conventional religion yeah. that has told us that it's a devil. Conforming, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Oh, this is so good. Um, okay, we're still in the game. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's your biggest uh, pet peeve, like, um, as a vegan? Like, people asking you dumb questions. I mean, you know, like, do you have any pet peeves? Um, one, of my, one of my pet peeves, I would have to say, is when you, when you, when I tell you I'm a vegan, all of a sudden you become a doctor. Oh, God. And you want to tell me, that that I'm not getting something yeah. or or you know this can happen that can happen and then I say well I'm 45 years old compare me to the average 45 year old black man walking in the community mm. and you tell me what's working right you know so right. I don't I hate when people do that and I and I I don't like when I'm giving facts on what plants can do for the body and someone always wants to come in and say, well, you can eat all the meat you want, or you're going to die of this anyway. Mm. This, that, that. I'm like, okay, well, you can rush yourself and die. Yeah, I can I can get into my car and leave, and right. I can't control if somebody hit me, but I can control what I put into my right. body. So mm. I, I hate when people do that because my thing is this. If you like meat, eat it, if that's what you like to do. But don't come on here trying to disregard right. facts about what it can do for somebody's that's body because, because, that's, because you like meat. Right, you know? right. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good answer. Um, what do you think? This is an interesting question. So, what's one thing that you think black men need to do better for our community and women? Um, 
first of all, uh, black men in in, in a in a, its entirety, mm-hmm. we have to be better examples. Mm-hmm. We have to be we have to be shown and proven examples of consistency in our communities. Uh, consistency is missing on a lot, a lot of levels, and um, I would I would dare not, I would say this with, in the most humble bone, but that's the reason why I have a lot of sisters that follow me. Because they see the consistency mm. of what I do. I've been consistent doing this since social media. Right. And anybody wants to see a positive consistency right. in our communities, but especially when it's a black man. Mm-hmm. And I tell black men this all the time. If you put your best fit foot forward to be a positive role model in the community, black women will, will support you. Yes. They will support yes. you and they will follow because... Black women want to see that. Yes. They say, that to see that. say that again. Say that again. We and will follow you. We will. That's so I, true. Absolutely. It supports you. You, you for get sure. all the support in the world. As long yes. as you're doing because because, you know, I'm I'm saying this to say, okay, if black women producing these babies mm-hmm. and they're not they don't have any some of the men are leaving, yeah. right? So they're left in these communities, some of these communities that might be broken up and it's being caused sometimes by a lot of the males doing whatever they're doing. When they see a black man is doing something positive, it sticks out it to them. Is. You get what I'm saying? Because throughout their life, they may have had inconsistency by so many other black men. So mm-hmm. one man that, that does that, it brings a light to them, and they and they love to support yeah. that. So I I'm would a, say... I'm ahead. sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. I was saying, like, listen to you say that it brought back, like, two episodes ago, we were talking about, um, I don't know if you heard about that Ebony K situation. Um, it, it was a lady, she was saying that um, she wouldn't date a man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I, I saw that. Yeah, mm-hmm. one thing she said to me that stood out was that she's never had a good example of a black man, even with her father, in her mm-hmm. whole entire life. Mm-hmm. And I think she dates white men, which, you know, do, do your thing, whatever. But I was mm-hmm. like, wow, that explains a lot because I look at somebody like her who might have some different experiences or different opinions of, about black men but then I look at somebody like me like I have only brothers I have great role models in my life you know what I'm saying I have I'm close to my dad all these type of things and so it that having an example of that it makes you look at men differently and it kind of sometimes expect more from them but yes. you know that that just made me think about that when you when you said um, that I want to answer for for black women oh yeah I'm sorry um yeah. I say for black women um, it's important to stop the secrets in the families. Um, a lot of times when you look at um, molestation and things like that that happen, most of the time these children are going to come to their mother. Yeah. And depending on who do it, if it's an uncle or brother or whoever, it's always hush, don't do, don't, mm. don't say that, don't say. And it puts those children in a place where they've come to confide into their mother at times and they may not even want to believe that, it's the man that they're right. sleeping with is doing it. Right. And it causes a lot of dissension amongst the children as they get older. No one no one knows but th- but them that the reason why the daughter can't stand a mom or the son can't stand a mom is because when they came to confide in truth, they didn't want to believe it. And I and this this is, you know, um, this is not to say to blame any black woman. She's doing what she feels would protect and not cause dissension, mm-hmm. but sometimes you have to be willing to blow the whistle so that we can find out who these people are in the communities right. and, and do something with it. So Absolutely. I, I always, I talk to my mom and my family about it all the time. Like, listen, we have so many people, girls in our family that have been molested or something mm-hmm. has happened to them. And they're upset because they've come to some grown ups and nobody wants to identify right. with that. And, you know, we have to be able to do a better right. job with that. That's a good one. I, I don't, I, It kind of, again, when you were saying that, it makes me think, like, black women are, sometimes we want to hold the black man so down, like, so much, it could be to the detriment of our children sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, And here's the last one with with this game. So what inspires you? Um, What inspires me is um, simple. Uh, (laughs) uh, I'll say this is, uh, yeah. (laughs) Okay, so uh, in three months in my mom's uh, womb, my dad came and said that he no longer wanted to be in a marriage. She had already had my brother and my sister. So my mom had decided to abort me. So she went and had the um had the um set it up, set the whole yeah. set the whole thing up. And so um she was going on to to have the abortion. She was heartbroken and when she got to the actual place, Dr. Avery, I thank him to this day, a mm. white man. She she said, Well, he was like, well, at the at the time, her name was Miss Howie. He was like, so Miss Howie, what's what's wrong? What's going on? You crying? She said, well, gave the whole spiel about my dad leaving, and so 
she said that the doc, Dr. Avery Ask started tearing up and he was like, I don't even suppose to say this to any woman. You're able to do what you want to do with your body. I'm actually going against my mouth practice by right. doing it. But that child is in your womb is meant to help thousands of people. It's that child has a purpose to, to be a leader and someone that's going to help a lot of people to be, become better. So if you abort that child, you're going to, you're not going to let that child do that. So I'm pleading oh. with you not to do that. So my mom said she instantly heard God within him and she got up, hugged him and left. And so she said, um, from that day on, if you notice, I work out a lot. Yeah. So my mom always worked out with me in her womb. She yeah. played tennis and everything up to I was born. Wow. So it's in me because the creator spared my life. I have to save lives literally. So wow. that's what I do. I save lives. I, not on no Jesus stuff, yeah, but yeah. saving lives by teaching you to eat the correct way and, and um, being a better version of yourself. So that's what, what inspires me is that I have an obligation to humanity and to my community. So I'm always inspired by, by that. Jesus. That's what you got. Listen, we are, we, we are 20 minutes in here. We didn't <laughs> got to the questions yet. Please, Lord. Okay. Listen, okay. That was our game, but I want to get to the meat of this because, okay. uh, well, not, not a meat. <laughs> we don't want to call it the meat, but <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> the fruit of this. Um, okay. <laughs> We was having a conversation, and, and mm -hmm. I, I said I had to get off track because it was such an important conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I was telling you about, like, some of my friends who have fibroids, and you had brought me, um, what is this called? Butterfly pea flower tea. Butterfly pea flower tea. Yep, yep. It's a, um, a great herb that comes out of Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, the scientific name is called a Clitoria tinea tea. Okay. So have you ever seen that chart that shows different fruits and vegetables like different parts of our body? Yeah. Like, if you cut a walnut open, it looks like the brain. Yes. Walnuts are good for the brain. Cut a... Tomato open, good for the heart. Hot tomatoes are like the heart. Yeah. Well, this right here, when it's budded, it looks like the clitoris of a woman. Wow. And so this flower is known for helping the reproductive system, killing off cysts, fibroids, excessive bleeding, cramping, bloating, hormonal disbalances, hot flashes, giving a woman her mojo back yeah. down there. Yeah. She's losing that. It's amazing. Now, men can drink it as well. I drink it all the mm -hmm. time because it's also good for skin, mm -hmm. mood, uh, helping your mood, um, helping you to sleep. Mm -hmm better at night even energy also a diuretic helps you to, um to use the restroom good so it does a whole lot so yeah um yeah i can't wait to get this too. um but yeah. we were talking about fibroids um and and tell the listeners your uh, what you know kind of our conversation about, about the fibroids so a, a lot of my friends um suffer from fibroids i, I have yeah. a friend who i was just telling you last week who had to have like basically all of her female stuff removed mm -hmm. She hasn't even had kids. I don't even know if she will be able to have kids. And I was telling you my story about how, you know, I went to the doctor to have my tubes tied and they removed, you know, my tubes or whatever. Um, and, and and tell the listeners about your thoughts about that because I think it's very, very important. Yeah. Um. Well, first of all, we have to know that 75% of the hysterectomies that happen happen to African-American women mm -hmm. in, in America. Secondly, African-American women have to know that you have the strongest gene, what I call the Superman gene. Mm. So you are the ones that produce the LeBron Jameses, mm -hmm. the Malcolm Xs, all of our great leaders. Uh, it comes to your womb. Right. And so since slavery, they've always tried to figure out how can a black woman have a baby one day and then the next day throw that baby on their back and be out there in the hot sun picking cotton all right. day. Is because of the strength of your body and the way that your body endures pain mm. more than anyone else as right. well. So the foundations of any health or medical fields in America, it's the foundation of a white male and a white female. Mm -hmm. Our bodies are more superior. Right. Right. So therefore, they have a their genes are not as strong. So remember when we were coming up, right? They said, don't even look at her wrong. She can have a baby. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. So we produce babies at an, at a mass, right. at a mass rate. Right. I mean, we produce a lot of kids. Yeah. And so whenever you go to the hospital, you're not being told what's happening with your parts. Right. Right. But I know of medical doctors that can tell me this or that were in the medical field that can tell me this. Yeah. They don't take any of your parts and just throw them away. Mm. Your parts go to somebody. Um, whether it's to someone else so they can have babies, um, whether it's somebody who is actual cannibals, cannibals oh exist. They're not, there's nothing that is, it, they exist on really? this earth. Yes, they do. Yes. They, they found, um, a guy, um, 
in Arizona, he had like three, um, he had like three van loads full of dead body parts frozen in his in his car, and the, yeah, you, yeah, this goes on. Oh. But it's just the fact that some of us are just not into that reality. We don't believe that that Jeffrey Dahmer wasn't the only one. He's not the only cannibal that was do, mm. that 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 did this. Right. There are plenty of Jeffrey Dahmers around right. here still living, mm. and so. When you go to the hospital and they saying, let me take your blood nine, ten times out of a day. Right. And you're not asking any questions. Your blood is going somewhere. Mm. It's not just going for them to store. They're using your blood for something because you have to realize your genes are the strongest. Wow. So whenever they take your ovaries and they take all of your insides out and they don't give you no options, they say, well, you're 45 years old. You're done with it. You might as well give it. You might as well t- uh, take it out. Right. You ever ask yourself, well, why you want to take it? Right. Well, <laughs> if you want to take it, didn't uh, God put it here for a reason? Mm. So why should why y'all all of a sudden y'all want to take it just because I don't want to have babies anymore? Right. We have to start thinking about that, and we have to start knowing that no parts of your body mm. don't go to somebody else, whether it's on the black market. You will not know. You will not sure know. Sure won't. You sure but won't. But this is not a conspiracy theory. And people like to label things as, I'm going I'm to talk about that too. Yeah. When they labeled, when they came up with the word conspiracy, mm-hmm. it gave the average person who has done no self-knowledge and no research to just throw it off into yeah. the back. It could be, it could be the, the, the most harshest truth, but you can say, oh, that's just a conspiracy yeah. theory. And you just throw it away. And it, 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 made people think that none of this can actually happen, yeah. that the people that think this way are crazy. Right. If I'm crazy, let this world be sane. Right. That's what I would tell people. Mm-hmm. So I would just tell anybody, when you start, if you have to, now a lot of doulas, a, a lot of the women that come and uh, birth the babies right. here, all these women talk about these, uh, talk about these things about when black women go into the hospitals, that's the reason why they don't trust when you tell them how how um, how much pain right. you're in. Right. You know they it said it, that's what they call racism within the hospitals. So they're like, oh no, she ain't she ain't got no pain. But then they're gonna go and they're gonna go to the white counterparts and make sure that they're okay. Right. So there's a lot of things because our genes are so much stronger that they do things with our parts that don't, that people don't really understand. Wow. wow. And you were saying how that tea can shrink fibroids. Yes. Yeah. It kills off. Um, I've had, I've helped about five women in the community to avoid hysterectomies because of the tea and the herbs that I bring in soursop that also kills off cancer cells, cysts, fibroids, moringa, yeah. um, baobab. I bring in herbs from out of Africa that help heal the body and, and help to wake up the healing intelligence yeah. in the body that's laying dormant. And the only reason why people have these type of problems that pop up in their bodies is because for so long you practice the wrong type of lifestyle and the immune system or the healing intelligence is saying, okay, dang, you ain't going to do nothing for me. Mm. You're just going to keep going to get McDonald's all the time. You ain't going to go put no plums in your body, no nothing that helped me do nothing. Okay, I'm just going to lay here. Right, and then disease, mm. then disease starts to pick up in the body. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, because um, this is the question I always have. Nothing has seeds anymore, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, when we go to the store, and I know you're saying we should be going and having like the raw fruits, but if if they don't have like like I love watermelon, but I never see watermelon with seeds anymore. Now I see them at the farmers market, mm-hmm. but I don't see it in the store. Mm-hmm. Is that I'm I know that's still better to to eat than not, than not eat it at all, but is that good to eat? Well, um, it's it's not the it's not the best choice, okay. right? However. Um, like like I would say, it's better than not having it yeah. at all because you're gonna still get some fiber out of some of that fruit. Yeah, you're gonna still get certain things, but I don't necessarily prescribe to it. This is what I tell everybody, especially from the black community. Right. Okay. Yes, we do have some food deserts. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but guess who else is moving into our communities and they're opening up stores? The Hispanics. The Hispanics have all the exotic fruits and fruits that you can think of, but you don't think to go into their stores because yeah. they brought the stores here for their community. Right. But um, it take they take EBT cards. Yeah. Farmers markets take EBT cards. If you own EBT card, yeah. I'm not labeling that on us. Right, but right. what I'm saying is that we have to think outside of the box, and if so, that means that if you don't find it at um, some of these stores. You go to the farmers markets where they are moving in exponentially. Um, Chinese markets, mm-hmm. um, they have the star fruits, the jackfruits, Indian markets. Wherever they bring their people in, 
they're going to build a store for their community. Right. It's up to you if you go in there. I never go in there. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But you can go and get organic, organic, or the freshest fruit with seeds and everything just by going to their stores. Oh, yeah. I go there all the time. I go there to get my coconut waters. They have, they, uh, they, I'm waiting for them to get the watermelon juice back. 100% oh. pure watermelon juice. But we just don't think to go in there. You have to think, okay, let me go there. because. Yeah. And guess what else? They're going to bring their people the best of what they have. Yeah. It's not going to be nothing bad. They're going to bring the best of yeah. it for their community. Yeah. So you got to think that way. Watermelon juice. I heard, is that a good um, detoxifier for your body? Absolutely it is. Um, I do I do a watermelon challenge each year. I've been doing it for five years where I just say, hey, whoever can, whatever family or individual eats the most whole watermelons, you get some of my product at the end. There's a winner every time. And, that's, and that is to influence people to eat more watermelon. But one of the problems is that there is a racist connotation behind watermelons yeah. that has yeah. scared a lot of us out to eat yeah. them. They call them nigger apples. Mm. And and they were able to make these pick pick ninnies, those little those little picks of us eating watermelon all the time because our ancestors always ate it because they knew what it was doing for their body. So yeah, you will always catch a black man or a black woman somewhere eating watermelon. Mm. They knew what watermelon did for their system. They wow. knew that it was one of the most powerful H3O waters that you can put in your body to hydrate you, to detoxify you. It's a, it is a libido booster for black men. It's a natural Viagra for black men. Wow. It, it, um, eating fruits for a woman helps her to clean out her, to get any of the worst. If she has bad smells to her be, from eating meat, it cleans it out. It, it lubricates her better. Everything. It, it, it does so much. But we, once they called it a nigger apple and said niggas eat them them big old apples, we got scared and we was like, oh, I don't want no watermelon because they and subconsciously they think that it has not everybody, but some people have a subconscious thing that it's a racist connotation yeah. to it, so we stay away from yeah. it. This is a um, podcast first because I ain't even going on my list. I'm just <laughs> blowing. <laughs> um, so one thing that you said, I think even before we started, well, that was important to me too because. Everywhere you turn, you hear people talking about depression, depression, I'm depressed, I have anxiety, I have all this and I have that, all that, you know, mentally I'm not right. Um, and one thing you were saying that I really agree with is like, you know, we're eating these meats, we're putting them in our body. So if, you know, whatever the mindset or whatever horrible way that the animal died or whatever, that mm -hmm. we're, that's coming into us when we eat that meat or right. that one thing I saw on your Facebook that I, I cannot never unsee uh -huh. <laughs> is um, you were talking about, um, or there was somebody talking about, when you cut into like a pus fill something that yeah. pus mm -hmm. comes out yeah. and they like par they paralleled it to when you cut into like a juicy piece of chicken and that juice come out that's right. that's, it, that's like that's pus, pus too like yeah. so i guess it's a twofold question so talk to us about like the depression and all that stuff that comes from being like a you know a meat eater mm -hmm. and then you know um the pus and all the ways that the animals die and how that can like affect us our mental health our de like depression and all that stuff okay yes uh first of all eating is a ritual mm. it's spiritual um something that you do on a daily basis is that's the reason why half of it is to pray over your food mm -hmm. because you're supposed to put a certain type of energy behind it yeah. But that's only half of it. If if I put pork there every day and I pray over it, pork has one job to do. It's going to cause you high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. It's going to give you strokes. And it's going to give you headaches. I don't care what you can call them, Jesus, <laughs> Buddha, whoever. Right. If you keep eating that pork, it is not going. your prayers are not going to be answered. Mm -hmm. There's a certain way that you have to eat in order for those prayers to be answered if you're asking for something to nourish your body, to nourish your body, or to give you good health you have to meet that halfway and so when it comes to dead animals i like to call it I, that's what i'm always going to refer to it too because it, it it meat kind of um sugarcoats it yeah call it dead animal <laughs> yeah so um most of us we only look at the end product that you get from the stores mm -hmm. No one thinks about energy and how energy can be transferred, but we know the science behind it. it says energy can never be destroyed. What? Only put into another form, mm. right? So when you take in animals that have a conscience, that's the reason why a dog, a cow can communicate with you. If you go to certain places where cows are, are sacred, mm -hmm. a cow will come and lay on your chest just like a dog will over here, wow. right? These animals have intelligence. They cry. They get sad. They get upset. If you watch, if you watch any animal documentary, the the cow, the mother, the mother cows, 
when their babies are stripped away, right, and they watch them go and put on and get put on the truck, mm-hmm. the truck will be leaving, and the mother cows you'll see about eight of them just chasing. Oh my god! Behind the cow until until the until the fence stop them. They're chasing mm-hmm. for their babies, right? It's just like a, a a woman. You're gonna fight for your babies. If something, it's fight or flight. I'm if you do something to my babies, I'm ready to fight. Right. We don't think of animals of having that same emotional intelligence as us. We have a higher form mm-hmm. of intelligence, but they can feel, communicate with us. So these documentaries, these animals are being kicked. They're being raped. They're people mm. p- taking their hands and sticking it up their butt. Oh and they're, these chickens are in all the, in these farm factories where they call it free range. They're not, they're not free range mm. like that. They're sitting, their legs are broken. They're sitting in their feces. Mm. They're depressed, Right. Where do you think that's going once you put it into your system? That energy is being transformed to you. That, and they say the fastest one that happens to is the deer. They say any deer hunter will tell you when you kill a deer, the adrenaline, you always taste a crazy taste from the first time you eat it because of the adrenaline of that deer being killed, right? So that cow is sad. That chicken sad. It's depressed. It's crying. It's angry. The babies have been taken away. They know they're about to be slaughtered. They're not dumb enough to know that they, they know they're being slaughtered. The people kicking them and doing them, however, and that's something that you digest and put into your body, and you wonder why you're waking up depressed, mm. angry, upset. After you get through eating that meal, you're like, "Oh my God, I feel sick." I'm, Ugh, oh God, tired, I just feel emotionally yeah. out of out of whack. Mm-hmm. It's a energy and it's a spirit behind everything that we eat. So. That's the reason why a lot of people are depressed. One of the main things that anybody will tell you if you go into the plant-based vegan lifestyle, they will tell you that going this way got me over my anxiety and my depression. That's one of the first two things that they talk about. So it's spiritual, and a lot of people don't look at it that way. This is everything. So this kind of will segue me to this question. So, again, I polled so many people. Have you thought about it? Like, you know, everybody, yes. But they're not doing it. Like, if someone wanted to transition into a, a more a healthier lifestyle, what steps or tips would you have for them? Um, I always tell people to start with Meatless Mondays. I do something called Meatless Monday Movement. And that is when I say, hey, on Mondays, you got 53 Mondays in a year. Take that Monday off. And it's even good for fam- family members if, you, if you're not having a lot of family time. This can be something that you do as a family to bring you closer together. Say, hey, all right, family, we're doing Meatless Mondays. Let's come up with some meals that we can do that's going to be meatless just for Monday. That's all we're going to do. Then you can go back to doing whatever. Mm-hmm. That it, it's, it's a consistency and also it's gonna, you're going to have to do research. It's going to teach you more. You're going to start learning more. One thing about the black woman, once she starts to research something, she's going to research it and she will usually put it and implement yeah. it. The black woman is the first doctor and nutrition nutritionist to the family. Mm. What she prepares is either going to give us health or it's going to give us make us very unhealthy, right. right? So go do the research and start and start doing meatless Mondays. Mm. Meatless Mondays may take you to two times out the week, may take you to three times out the week. Hey, somebody might even become vegan or plant based. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, if you can become plant based. Do it. Right. But this is not about when people come to me and they're like, how can I become vegan? I, I initially detoured them away from that because I know that more than nine times out of ten, your discipline is not strong yeah. enough to go all the way into it. And then you're going to do that and then you revert back right. instead of saying, OK, let me take these baby, baby steps, steps to be able to get there. Because health, is, good health or bad health is accumulated over time. So the reason why we are in the position of the worst, the un, most unhealthiest people in America are African-American men and women. We lead in every health-related disease in America. Wow. That came from an accumulation of when they introduced fast food into our lives. Mm. Once we tasted that McDonald's fry, that's all we wanted. Yeah. Then we started giving the McDonald's fry to the babies. And it triggers something. This food that they're giving us, they know that it's triggering something in the mind, yeah. into the brain. Causing certain sensories. So when you give it to your baby, they taste that salty, whatever it is. Instead of you giving it a mango or, or, or a watermelon to suck on to get that palace ready for fresh fruit, you're giving it a chicken bone or you're giving the baby a, a fry. And you wonder why by the time that baby gets to five to six years old, oh, my baby don't want no fruits and vegetables. Mm. Because you've been giving it fast food all this time and that's not that's fake food and right. that's all they want. It's sugary. It, 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 sugar 
sugar has the same um, sensory that's let off the crack cocaine. Yes, yes. So this is the reason why whenever you take a sucker from a baby, they fall out on the floor like yes. they're crackheads. <laughs> yes. Because that, that, that is triggering that. So we just have to go back to making those steps, start off with Meatless Mondays, okay. and go from there. Okay. And so what about pescatarian? Like, do you like do you eat fish, or is that an option? No, no I, I don't eat fish. Um, okay. um, I gave up fish. Okay. However... I, I love when people ask me this question mm -hmm. because let's look at the Nation of Islam, okay? The Nation of Islam is the most healthiest black entity that we have in America as a whole. If you look at the women, they're, they're, they're like the 70s women, basically, double Dutch, whatever. Yeah. The men, they're nice, focused. Yeah. They don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't do any of that. And some of them eat fish. All mm -hmm. of them don't eat fish, but some of them do. And they have a very healthy lifestyle. They are very healthy. You can see it on them. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that fish is not, um, that some people can't have fish. Mm -hmm. um, what I tell people, if you're going to get fish, go get it where the rich people or where the Indians have it or where the Chinese have it so you can get the best quality yeah. of fish. Don't go to Walmart getting white and little things. That's yeah. fake, 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 fake. Yeah. Go somewhere where you have to pay a pretty penny for mm -hmm. it and then you get it. But while you're doing that, while you're eating the fish, make sure you got some fresh fruit and veggies on your plate to eat so then you can get a, a great balance. So that's what I tell people. Why don't yeah. you eat fish? Um, I don't eat fish for the same reason that I don't eat any type of animal because of the energy that comes with it. Mm. So I, don't, I just don't want the energy of knowing that something's been killed to go into my body because I believe death breeds death and life breeds life. Mm. So if if it has eyes, if it can if it can produce babies, if it can defecate, I don't want to put it in my system, right? Mm. That's how I that's how I look at it because that is another another entity. It's another spirit being only in another different form. Yeah. But it also has a reproductive system and has all of that. So I didn't come from that. I came from the earth. So I I eat from the earth in which I came wow. from. Um. So when you're eating a lot of meat and pork and McDonald's and stuff like that, um, and let's say you are transitioning, but let's say you're not transitioning, mm -hmm. you always hear about, like, parasites in your body. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you suggest for people to, like, help, I guess, get rid of them or de detox? Or how often should you detox? Or, like, what are your thoughts around detoxing? Um, I, I, I always, when I think of detoxing, um, I go to the foundation. And when we were growing up, right, and – Plum season would come around, right? We picking those plums, we eating those plums, everybody happy. Yeah. What were you doing later on that night or the next morning? I don't know. You was on the toilet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you, you thought you were sick. Yeah. I got diarrhea. I yeah. got the runs. No, those plums was cleaning, cleaning us out from all the Fruit Loops, all the mm. McDonald's and all that stuff. But we were eating for, for, for all that time. It was detoxifying the body. Wow. So... Now, today, we didn't know that. Now, today, they call it what? A fruit detox. Yeah. That's what they call it, yeah. right? They gave it a name. So, I like to tell people to go to the foundation. Go get you some peaches. Go get you some watermelons. Go get you some cantaloupes, strawberries, and eat eat your detox. Mm -hmm. Eat your fruit. It's going to clean you out, wow. right? Now, if you want to go into a detox, get some herb, herbs. I'm Moringa, sour sap is mm -hmm. good for cleaning the lymphatic system in the blood. Um, your sea moss gels, you know, your black seed oil. But the reason why I don't, with my people, I'm very skeptical about telling them about doing a detox because I'm wanting to teach them how to change their eating habits. There's no need for me to give you this detox if you're going to go right back to putting pork <laughs> and stuff back in your That's system. That's true. Because it, 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 it defeats the purpose. It does. So, and so when you speak about the parasites... The parasites is what comes out of dead animals. So if you take any piece of meat and you sit it out on the, on the, t on the counter long enough, you're going to see those worms, worms come out, yeah. right? So those worms can't be cooked out, none of that. They're still there. So once yeah. you put that into your system, the body, red meat takes 30 days to get out of the system. So if you're eating red meat three times a day, that's three times 30. Oh, my. So if you're doing that for a week, imagine how much is sitting there. How many times are you defecating? How many times are you emptying your internal trash? Nine times out of ten, black people, most of the black people that I know or that come to me, they only use in the bathroom twice a week, three times a week. Oh wow! Right? They're not even. They're not even once a day. You should do it more than once a day. Really? But most people, yeah, you should. Our bodies 
should operate how our bodies operated when we were born. When a child, when your baby takes milk or takes something, they use the bathroom. How many times a day you got it? That's how our bodies was always supposed to operate. But once we started to put the wrong things in there, it hardens. Mm. It called, it backs up on the colon. So red meat and dead animals, they don't digest out the system fast enough because it's not really meant for us to eat. Sure. So these parasites come out in the body. Um, anybody, you go to any um, mortician, mm-hmm. anybody that knows anything about cutting up open bodies or doctors, they'll tell you that somebody died with all these worms in their system. These parasites sit in the body. They eat on the bacteria and all the other things that you have, and they grow and grow in the system. Mm. Not only that, the average American dies with about 40 pounds of excess feces in their bodies. Mm. And so people are literally full of SHIT. Right. <laughs> Shit. And, <laughs> yeah. and that comes from constipation, mm. putting the wrong things in their system and they're not using the bathroom enough. Mm. So if you see a black man or any man walking around with a big hard that gut, belly, yeah. all that is is feces, wow. worms, mucus, and things like that sitting in there. And so, I mean, it's hard. It's hard. Is it ever too, I mean, it's, I know it's never too late, but mm-hmm. like, like me, I just turned 40. So like, if I decided to like change my, my eating habits, I mean, is it ever too late or, you know, is it ever too late? Um, I would say, I always say it's never too late as long as you, as long as you have the will to fight. Mm -hmm. The immune system, right? The immune system works the way it works. If you get a fever, it's your body telling you that, okay, you put the wrong thing in there. I got to heat it up to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Headaches, all these things are signals from the body's telling you. If you go to an emergency room, that immune system works as long as it can until you actually pass away. So mm-hmm. long as you have the will to open up your mouth and allow a piece of fruit to get put in your system, I believe that you have a chance. People have reverse stage four cancers. Um, I just gave a guy who had a stage four colon cancer. I had him on my sour sop. He no longer has it. And I'm oh. waiting on him to give me my um, to give a testimony for me on video. I was helping them out for about four or five months. Um, so it can be reversed, but you have to be ex- as extreme with that disease as that disease is being extreme with you. Yeah. Most of the time when I come to somebody and I tell them that they have cancer, or they say that they have cancer and I tell them that they can't eat no dead animals, that they got to eat from the earth, you mean to tell me I can't have no baked chicken? I can't even do fishing? No, your body is because those that meat has carcinogens. Those carcinogens are what's going to feed on the cancer and cause the cancer to keep Grown. going. You have to put from the earth the Genesis 129 lifestyle in which God gave the very first diet to man. You can read it in the Bible. And that is where you're able to clean your system. The creator was very, very intelligent when we were made. That's the reason why a tomato looks like the heart. Yeah. That's the reason why walnuts look like the brain. That's the reason why... Um, kidney beans look like the kidney. He made it where you can eat from the earth. He knew that your body needed iron, and you couldn't put put, put, put I mean, put a, uh, put a piece of iron ore in right. your in your body. So he put it in, in vegetables, mm. and told you to eat it in vegetables. And once we get that, and we understand that, we will be better off. So it's never too late, as long as you have the will yeah. to fight. Yeah. One of the, I feel like a common mis- misconception that I know I've thought about um, when I've stopped eating meat is like, where do you get your protein from? Mm-hmm. Like, that's a common question. But like, answer that. Like, like, where do people who don't eat meat get their, I mean, I think it's a dumb question kind of, but like, where do you get your protein from? Well, uh, most people don't know that protein comes in every vegetable and fruit. Um, uh, you can look at any animal in animal kingdom. The plant-based animals are the biggest. <laughs> the gorilla, silverback gorilla is the strongest. The elephant, the rhino. The giraffe, the horse, mm. the cow, the buffalo, um, all these animals are very big and they're plant-based eaters. So when the cow is eating and getting this protein from the earth, you're only eating regurgitated protein that's not even going into your system the correct way when you eat it from the right. cow. You can get the same thing from the earth. Yeah. It you can look it up. It's just a it's just the American um Pyramid scheme is exactly that. It's a scheme to tell you that you have to get this protein from meat. Mm. And that's an overload of the wrong proteins in the system. You never heard somebody being in the hospital for lack of protein. Yeah. Never true. heard of that. 
Now, um, I know another big thing, because um, I think I asked you about this before you came, is CMOS. Like, mm-hmm. CMOS, I feel like it came out of nowhere, and they were. it's been, it's been like, you know, it, it, it has all the nutrients that we need. Is that true? What is CMOS? Is there such a thing as bad CMOS? Because I see people selling CMOS everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then um, my brother was saying that, that you can just buy the, the thing off of uh, Amazon and just soak it, whatever. Like, what exactly is CMOS? And, it, and is it, if it's that, if it has all these nutrients, why aren't, why is everybody eating CMOS? Well, um, first of all, CMOS, okay, just look at the sea. Mm-hmm. We know that the sea is a whole nother world. There's places that the boats can't even get right. to in the sea. So, um, just like superfoods that you have on the earth, moringa, mm-hmm. um, all these other ones, aloe vera, and all these other superfoods that was found on the earth, you also have superfoods in the, in the ocean. So, um, may his soul rest in eternal peace forever. Dr. Uh, Dr. Sebi was right. the first one to really start speaking on sea moss. Um, it is an amazing superfood for the body. Um, I call it the, like you put the best oil in your car to make sure that engine mm-hmm. runs right. Sea moss is like an elixir for the internal organs. So if, if you have somebody that's a smoker, a real bad smoker, and they got all that mucus, they start taking sea moss, they'll start spitting all that mucus mm. up. They got bad kidneys, sea moss will go and attack that. Um, low energy, it's also good for the skin. I literally take my sea moss gel before I'm about to take a shower every so often. I put it on my face, wow. put it on my face. As I'm taking my shower, it dries up. I clean it off my face. Well, you got it's beautiful it. skin. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But um, it's very good. It um, it has the antioxidants that the body needs. Um, it does have the ninety two essential nutrients. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's all the body's missing is nutrients. It's not mm-hmm. the solid foods. Once your body gets a certain type of nutrients, your body's like, okay, this is what I need to keep going. So I'm I'm okay. That's what superfoods are. Wow. So yeah, um, sea moss is. Now, the most popular superfood around because they made it popular. Yeah. Now, there's the difference in the sea moss, of course. Yeah. Of course, you have farm-raised sea moss, and that's a sea moss that is really thick if you buy it, like it's thick. The, the natural sea moss looks more like oodles and noodles, real, real thin, like mm. strands. And then it has a natural iodine on it that comes from out the ocean. You can look at farm-raised sea uh, uh sea moss and it looks like salt like they just empty salt yeah. on it. and even when you prepare it it's very salty it has no type of taste where natural sea moss after you prepare it the correct way some of that taste will actually leave our taste is very good because we put excuse me agave and cinnamon in ours so we protected we we perfected the taste yeah. of our sea moss but it's very powerful i would tell i have an elder who's 87 years old mm. She had rheumatoid arthritis, all these different problems. She lives and dies by a sea moss because wow. now she can get up, get around, and walk and do what she needs to do. Mm-hmm. And I have a lot of those testimonies. Wow. Mm-hmm. Another thing that we, that I keep seeing, um, alkal, alkaline, uh, maybe I can't, I can't pronounce the lower, alkaline. 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 Mm-hmm. I'm going to edit this part out. <laughs> alkaline. Mm-hmm. You see that everywhere, like pH, alkaline. Mm-hmm. What is that? Like, I mean, because I feel like, you know, you'll hear about these things, and then all of a sudden they're everywhere. Yeah. And then it's like, what's real? What's not real? What does that even mean? Yeah. Well, alkaline is uh, also something that Dr. Sebi made yeah. popular alkaline, meaning that when your body is at an alkaline state, disease can't live in it. Mm. Right. So your body's either acidic or alkaline. Right. So they have these alkaline waters out here that don't get me wrong. You can drink it. Yeah. But Natural spring water is alkaline. Uh, one of the things Dr. Sebi also said is the, the regular um, Grayson spring water, mm-hmm. that Grayson, that's alkaline spring water. He tells people to, to get that water. There's a natural spring where I get my water from called Cold Springs Methodist. Um, I turned the hood onto it. It's like it's, a church, right? Yeah, it's a church. Yeah. I, when I, I've been getting that water there for five years. That's natural spring water that comes out the earth. It's alkaline already. Mm-hmm. However, from my good brother, Dr. Lamar Price, he taught me that the body identifies with water as water. It mm. doesn't identify with it being alkaline or being any of this. It identifies, as long as it's a clean source of water, it identifies with it as water. So I don't drink alkaline water, mm. but if somebody wants to, that they, they can. But for me, what's more important than just regular alkaline water is H3O water, which comes from fruits. H3O, that's mm-hmm. a different level. And that's the real water that we need to be putting in our system. More fruit waters. That's your cantaloupe. 
a fruit that has water intake. That's why you eat. You bite into a pear; it's juicy and all that yeah. water. No, that's the that's the type of water that you actually should be in, taking uh, more than just regular water. Actually, and okay, what about fasting? Mm-hmm. I, again, that's another thing that's that's becoming very popular. Um, I, it, I I've done that because it helped me lose my baby weight and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, should we be doing that? How often should we do that? Is it really something that's imperative to our health? Yeah, I believe I definitely believe that. Um, you should fast. I do my I I'm. I'm an intermediate faster, mm-hmm. so I don't eat. When you, when you see me in the gym, I haven't eaten until probably 4 or 5 o'clock that day. I take my herbs. In the my afternoon? Herbs, yeah. Wow. My herbs give me the nutrients that I need, um, the superfoods that I need. My body's fed, fed, and it feels like it's already eating what it mm-hmm. needs. I go off of that, and then I'll eat around 4 o'clock. And the body always needs a break from... Uh, from doing certain yeah. things. That's why when we rest, we're not eating, you know. So any extra fasting that goes on along with that also helps with internal healing. Mm-hmm. And it also forms a discipline as well, you know, to be able to discipline yourself not to always want to put something in your mouth is amazing because discipline also carries into other parts of yeah, our lives. That's true. And so I, I would tell anybody fast, it, it is a, um, you know, you can do a water fast. You can do a water fast with, with you know, fruit fast. You don't have to be extreme on yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But go somewhere where you're not putting a lot of solids in your body. If you can do it for one or two days, do it. Your body may feel weak after a little bit because it's mm-hmm. used to eating. But then all of a sudden, you're going to get this energy. You're going to get a lot of more mental clarity. A lot of people that fast for three and four days, they'll tell you that they feel like they can float. Wow. It feels so good. So. Yeah. When you have, um, cause I know that when I fast, I do feel that weak feeling. Um, but that, but that's okay. That's normal. That's normal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is there any time when you're feeling that weak feeling that you should be uh, like alarmed or that's just a part of the whole fast? Um, I, you know, I say always pay attention to your body. Yeah. So if you feel like you're weak within the fast, don't, don't be upset with yourself. If you go, got to go have a piece of fruit yeah. that's going to help you to feel like you've got some energy that's still healthy for the body. You know, don't, push yourself to extremes that you may not be aware of. So do your research on different types of fasts. You yeah. get what I'm saying? And, but yeah, it was a reason why the creator told all of the prophets and all of Yeshua and all fast of them to fast, pray. fast and pray. So there is a power behind it, but you're getting your body is getting a certain type of fast when you're sleeping. But that's the reason why they say you don't supposed to eat past a certain time right. because then your body can go into fast mode, right. you know, and then that's what they say when you wake up. You break fast. So, so how, how often do you eat? Um, I eat once a day. Once a day? Mm-hmm. I eat once a day. Um, Honorable Elijah Muhammad um, spoke about that and how to eat to live, how eating once a day is equivalent to um, having fasting throughout the year. I think it's 50-something 50 50 something days or more, maybe more than that out the year. So just eating once a day is equivalent to the amount of hours of not eating to a certain amount of fasting of full days throughout the year. So So when you um have that one meal, like what 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 does that look like? Um it depends. Mm-hmm. Um sometimes it can only be a smoothie and uh um a smoothie and some some more fruit. Yeah. It just depends on how my body's going. Um if I um I I fast on you can fast on CMOS gel. You can wow. just take CMOS gel for three, four days, and it's gonna give you exactly what your body needs. You you can never eat enough CMOS gel. Um, but if I'm gonna have a big meal, right? Um, I will do um sometimes I'll make like for me and my sons, I'll make like this, it's like a vegan wrap. It'll be like um wild rice. I'll soak wild rice and then it'll sprout, and then I'll cut up different veggies with peppers or whatever. If I want to add a mock meat for them or for mm-hmm. me, right. I'll make a mock meat. It, can, it might be um some mock chicken, yeah. um uh no evil, any yeah. type that you think, and I'll make chicken wraps and then I'll add avocado or something to the side. My my diet is very simple. But for women, women bodies call for more nutrients mm. than a male's body calls okay. for. A man's a man's body usually calls for the nutrients to produce sperm mm-hmm. and to make sure that he's his libido stays where it is. But for women, you lose blood monthly. Um, your body's always preparing for a child, right. so your body may need more. Yeah. I had a sister come to me. Um, she was in the military. She had been vegan for six months, mm-hmm. no six years, and she said, "Marathi." 
um, I went to the doctor and my, my, my numbers were low and I want to have a baby. And so I, I'm, I'm asking you, what do you feel about salmon? Salmon. Should I, I, should I put it back? I, hes- I didn't hesitate to say, no, put some salmon in your body. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Don't put yourself in a situation where you're not getting what you think you need. And you can have a, a piece of salmon that can give your body what it needs to operate fully as a woman. That's what you do. You get what I'm saying? I don't subscribe to a woman going and having a bunch of red meat like the doctors yeah. and stuff say. You can you can do salmon or something like that, but always pay attention to your body. Now there are some women out here you can follow that can that can show you how to do a full vegan lifestyle and be okay. Mm-hmm. But you may not have the means to do that. You may not have the time to slow down and do that. So therefore, if you do what you have to do to make sure your body's getting what it needs. Okay. Yeah. I'm a, um, at the end. I want you to, t- to talk about some of your pro- um, your products and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. one, that can, that brought up a question, and I only have a few more. I know you you've been here That's with right. it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I was telling you I just had a baby, and I have like a, another friend that just had a baby. And you were talking about um, something you have. Called, it's a strong man, strong, strong man, man, strong man. man. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, and I keep hearing you talk about libido and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, and women and all that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. I I noticed that after having my baby, like I have a very little libido. I'm just gonna be listen, right. listen. Mm-hmm. I don't listen. Leave me alone. Don't touch yeah. me. <laughs> like I don't. <laughs> I you. you know. Um, yeah. and I I was someone was telling me that that's very very common. Like yeah. is. Is libido something that should not be low for men and for women? Because I know you have the products that like can help, I guess, regulate that. But if if your libido is low, like, is that like um, a cause for alarm? Um, I tell you, low energy, low libido, all of that has to do with a source of energy that you're not giving your body your foods that you're not intaking, right? So once you start to put certain, like, see, see certain, certain people don't know, like, okay, for an example, um, this, let's just say that you have a bag full of bananas in there, right? And that's all you have to eat, right? And you feel your energy's low. If you go and eat those bananas, bananas is like giving you a bite. It's like equi- eating one banana is like equivalent to having a two-hour workout. It give you that type of energy, oh, wow. right? So, when the body is low of energy, it's almost like you're lifeless, yeah. right? So if you put the right things in your body, it's going to lift up all of that. The energy is going to be there, right? So as we get older, our libido starts to drop, but it's not because it has to. It's because we're not putting the right nutrients in the mm-hmm. body to cause that. It's all a nutrient deficiency wow that would cause the body to go into a dormant, lazy state. Mm -hmm. And so food is supposed to be fuel. So what type of fuel are you giving the body, right? And so that's what I would tell anybody. For men, for men, it's simple. Um, uh, Dead animals is the only form of cholesterol that comes Mm. through animals. This this main vein is nothing but a blood vessel. Blood in the body has to travel 600 miles a day mm-hmm. in the body. So let's say that we're going from here to Florida. And we got a straight shot to Florida with no traffic. That means you're going to get there eight, eight and a half, nine hours. But say you got a, a roadblock, a, a wreck, the police there. Every other time you stop and you stop and you stop and those are obstacles that you got to get through. Right. Imagine that being blood. So if cholesterol builds up because your 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 um Arteries are clear first, mm-hmm. but as you eat, what they show you, the cholesterol. Sinks. Hardens, yeah. That's mm-hmm. right. So that cholesterol is stopping the blood from getting to Blowing. the penis to have an erection mm-hmm. through it, dead animals. They think that eating a bunch of meat is manly, but it's taking away your manhood. Wow. And when that happens, scientifically, you can go to Harvard or any of these places. They'll tell you that if this stop working, the next thing you're about to have is a heart, heart. problem. Mm-mm. Right. After the heart problem, this start this part starts to starts to stiffen up and you have a stroke. So there's no such thing as a heart attack. We attack our own hearts. The heart has mm-hmm. one job to do, and that's to pump blood throughout the body and get it where it needs to go. Wow. We attack our own hearts by what we put into our system to stop that heart from doing its job. Mm. So everything has to do with what we're putting in the system that's either going to cause our system to work the correct way or break down on us and what we call old age or I'm getting old, I'm getting stiff, I'm this. Uh, All that comes from 
certain things you're eating. I'll say this. All right, arthritis. Okay. Regular table salt and man-made table salt and man-made sugar, the body cannot digest it. Okay? So what does the body do? The body is going to, it's smart enough to say, I can't digest it, so let me shoot it in the different areas in the mm-hmm. body where there's, where there's openings or there's places. So it shoots it in the gaps of your hands. It's like a crust that mm-hmm. builds up onto it, and it stops it from being able to move. It also um, shoots it. You know, you know when people get them gal toys, they be, they be small. The mm-hmm. next thing you know, you see them a year later, then grew and grew and grew. The body keeps shooting it mm-hmm. right there. That's where, that's where it shoots it at. So the body's intelligent enough to know that it can't digest it, so I got to shoot it out the place, shoot it out the place. So that's how our body works. It's, it's smart enough to say, okay, if I can't get rid of this fake stuff out the body, I got to shoot it in the gaps wow. in the body and just let it build up on your body. Mm. That's what happens. Wow. This has been amazing. So, so, tell, so last, mm-hmm. last two questions. Mm-hmm. Well, last question. Um, if someone was transitioning, because I'm hoping that people are going to listen to this and be like, let me start at least with a Meatless Monday. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to, first of all, where can they find you like to order your products and stuff like that? But if they wanted to get three things from you, mm-hmm. what would be the top three things that you would suggest? Um, go to um, my website. I have a men's bundle and a women's bundle. Okay. okay? The women's bundle is Moringa, which fights over 300 diseases in the body. Um it is has ninety two. It's another superfood that's similar to just like um, a sea moss, but it's a it's a land superfood. Forty six antioxidants. It's like giving your body twelve times the amount of iron and spinach, mm. seven times the amount of vitamin C that's in oranges, uh, so on, so on, and yeah. so on. And then baobab. Baobab is a superfood fruit. Have you ever seen that um, that tree in Africa where they got those African kids holding hands around that big yeah. old tree? That's a baobab tree. And I heard tree. that in a Beyonce song. I didn't know what she was talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yep. And it was also in Lion King. Remember yeah. the, okay, that tree produces a fruit that has the highest concentrated form of vitamin C, potassium, magnesium, calcium, and fiber of any fruit in the whole entire world. They tell you that you got to get your fruits and veggies in your system on a daily, right? So say you're not eating that. Moringa is like giving you your veggies times 10. Baobab is like giving you your, your, your fruit times 10. And then the butterfly pea mm-hmm. works on your harmonial problems and things like yeah. that. That's the women's bundle. The men's bundle is moringa, baobab, and strongman. Okay. Something that I take daily. Yeah. When I work out or do whatever, I take it. That's going to give the man everything that he needs to get his body to be in, running an optimal, optimal level and staying consistent on it, doing it once a day. You will start seeing some phenomenal results. Wow. The first thing they're going to start telling you, you're going to start, your energy level is going to go to a different level and your mental clarity mm. is going to get so clear. And it's not a jittery energy. It's a gradual energy that once your body gets the energy, well, you know what? I feel like working out. I can get back to working out wow. again. You start walking up and down. Then you start getting to other things. But also over time, the first thing women tell me, because women get acrylic nails all the time, they say their nails get so strong, strong from taking something that has so much vitamin D in right. it, right? They say their skin started to clear up and their hair starts to grow. Mm. That's what, what black women are, or, or any woman yeah. always tells me. With men, it's the libido gets better. Their skin starts to clear up. They have more energy. I got a lot of truck drivers that take my product because they got to be out there focused. I have a lot wow. of college students that take it so they can focus. I've helped seven brothers in the trucking industry because you got to get that blood pressure yeah. down. yes. I get them on my herbs. All of them pass their tests wow. so they can become drivers. Mm, mm. Yeah. And, okay, so this is the last question now. Because now, <laughs> listen. So blood, high blood pressure. Mm-hmm. My brother asked me this question, and it really this thing has had me thinking for so much. And, I, and I'm assuming it's the foods we eat. Mm-hmm. My brother said to me, he was like, why is it that high blood pressure is so prominent in the black community and not the white if blood is blood? Uh-huh. Is, it, is it the food? Um, not, It's not. The food plays a... a a role in it, mm-hmm. but it's also the stress levels that mm-hmm. we endure that they don't endure. Yeah. Right. So when you, when we get pulled by the cops, I don't care how healthy yeah. it is, your high, yeah. your blood pressure going up. <laughs> right. Because right. we have, because we, we, we're very paranoid because of what has happened mm-hmm. to us. So when we're put in certain stressful situations, our blood pressure rises. How do you, if we're as a black people already have to deal with the, the hardest thing to be in America is a black man and a black woman, yes. period. So if we know this, that means that we have to have put an equation in place to
to make sure that our stress levels stay a certain level. Mm -hmm. Even when we get that stress, we have an equation to get it back down. One of the best stress levels is to work out. Mm -hmm. The body produces a hormone that's equivalent to sex, drug, and alcohol without the side effects. That lowers your stress. Just by doing that alone, you feel better. That's the reason why after you feel done with the workout, you'd be like, dang, it was strenuous, but man, I feel amazing. Oh my God. Next day you might wake up and you may be more sore, but get through that. Yeah. That's the way that you relieve stress because it's going to send, sick. first of all, the body has all these nerve endings that send signals to the brain. So if I hit my toe on this table, it's going to send a signal to the brain of pain. Look at that from a food perspective. Wow. So when you're eating the wrong things and everything that you're putting in your body is causing your diabetes to get bad, um, gout to come, uh, arthritis issues, what is the signals that's being sent to your brain? A bunch of pain, mm. which there is there, can, there cannot be a separation between mental health and physical health wow. because mentally signals are being sent to your brain of pain. So how can you have good mental days if you're always in yeah. pain? That's the reason why you go to the, you go to the um you ever been to a uh, place, I mean at at your job, somebody walk in they cool but they on medications, they high blood pressure they diabetes, you, one day they cool the next day they come you better not say nothing to me I'm gonna cuss you right, out my, right. my blood pressure high. right they just reacting to how their body's feeling they in right. pain so they don't know how to react but to that but have you ever gone into a Whole Foods a Trader Joe's or any health place have you ever seen somebody fighting acting up wanting no. to keep People, you can go into a Walmart, people fighting, and oh you can go to food lines, people all looking all slow. And yeah. Unhealthy people produce unhealthy actions. Healthy people produce healthy actions. Mm. That's the reason why when you, you ain't never seen a fight or a shootout break out in some of these health food stores because everybody has a health conscious of healthiness. Wow. You know what I'm mm. saying? So in our communities, if you go into Chicago right now and you switch up their diet, mm. most of them, most of them, the, the level of violence would drop tremendously. Wow. It's the foods that causes these reactions. There's certain chemicals that cause a reaction in the body, ADHD and all these other problems by the chemically induced foods that you get out the corner market. Mm. So once that changes, that's the reason why Honorable Elijah Muhammad them said, okay, you've got to change what you're eating first wow. before we can actually get to you to make you civilized. Because if you have a blockage, in your brain and in your body, you're not getting a signal, mm. the correct signal to the creator to help you to be able to walk and endure this life the correct way. Right. So changing up, changing up by what you eat. I'm talking even on the intimate level between husband and wife, wow. becoming more healthier will make your, your relationship more healthier. Wow. You get me? So that is what I tell my people. It's going to start on the plate in order for us to change the way that we're acting the way that we're treating each other, the way that we treat ourselves, self-love starts on the plate. Mm. Self-love. That's going to be the title of this episode. Self-love starts on the plate. Please tell our listeners where they can find you, please. Um, you can find me on uh, TikTok, Marathi Howie, M-O-R-A-T-H-I-H-O-W-I-E. On Instagram, Marathi underscore Howie. On Facebook, Marathi Howie. Um, um, YouTube, Marathi Howie. I have a, a few interviews on there. Uh, with one with Dr. Lamar Price called Healing the Body Through an Alkaline Livid. It's over like 18,000 views. Wow. Then I have another one with Vegan Linked about my vegan journey. You just put my name in. You'll see Vegan Linked. That one's over. It says Marathi Howie, 24-year wow. journey at the time. That's about like over 19,000 views. You can watch that there. Um, I'm CEO of Vegan Vibe Music okay. Series. This event right here. This is a family-friendly, pet-friendly event that me and my sister, my big sister, Latisse Howie, who's a co-founder, and my cousin, Christy Williamson, we're a family-owned event where we have brought live music, live DJs, family-friendly, pet-friendly environment with all vegan everything, the best vegan food trucks, vegan vendors, and it's also a vendor event of skincare products, hair, clothes. As long as it's vegan or plant-based, you can come out with it, and we have a lot of different vendors you can from uh, get from, Asiabos, mm -hmm. uh, Juices. And it's a family reunion event. When is so? When's the next one? Is it tomorrow? Next, yeah, June eighteenth. Um, is that tomorrow? Afro Beats, and that's mm. Father's Day, and okay. it's gonna we're gonna dedicate a lot to the fathers. Nice. It's gonna be a lot of families out there with their fathers. It's a place where fathers are gonna be able to come and relax. Just bring your lawn chairs. <laughs> then we got um, Collective Soul, 
Then we have House and Go-Go. The DJ will play Go-Go, and the in, the artists will play Go-Go music if they're coming to nice. perform. Then we got old school hip hop. Last year we had uh, Greg, nice and nice and smooth. DJ Shaquem, a Bell Bib DeVoe. For um, old school R and B, we had Big Bub up today. Sunshine came to perform. Great Horace Brown. So this mm. is our event. It's a uh, it's our baby. We're in it f- five years, and it's at No Doubt Brewery. Free event. Come out if you want a I'm family. Going, I'm going tomorrow. Event. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to that tomorrow yeah. for sure. Listen. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have all your links, all your information down in the description. Um, this will be on YouTube. This will be everywhere. This has been, this is like my 27th, 28th episode. This is like oh, the best episode good. I've ever had. Like, this has been so informative. It makes me like almost sad that I need everybody to hear this. Like, mm-hmm. this is like the most informative thing I've ever heard in my life. This uh-huh. is amazing. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. But listen, Thank you for being on the episode, guys. Make sure you tune in. Make sure you look in the link below and follow Marathi. Follow us, and we will see you guys next week. Love. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Thank you. I want the bundle. <laughs>